Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. Mother's Day is coming, so I would like to show you how to do this prong set mother's ring. Are you ready? Let's get started. So we're gonna starting with the facet stone round in whatever size that you like. If you like to get the stone to practice, just sign up a newsletter and then you will get a link for it. All right, so now we have this. Um, I'm going to starting from the ring size and in my demonstration, I would like to use 16 millimeter. And then you do want it to have this sitting not too low because if you sit it too low, the cooler is going to stick it out and that it's not going to be uh, pretty when you wear it. So we want to have a distance right here is roughly about 0.5 to one millimeter. Okay. So then the next one is we need to kind of uh, thinking about how many do you want it. Uh, basically, mother's ring, the, the more children that you have, the more you, you are going to make, right? So I'm going to make five. Um, so I'm going to coming over here and using my rotate tool, copy equal yes. And let's see the distance, how much it need to be from there. I'm just going to guess about minus 20. And see if that distance work okay. And if it that's okay for you, just minus 40. And then we don't need to do the other side because we can just mirror it, right? So ideally this distance here, you want to keep it about 0.1 millimeter to 0.2 millimeter. And so you do not want them to jam in each other because um, the stone will crack. You do not want them to be far, far away because the closer you get, you get more reflection. All right, so this is uh, a range for the stone. And the next things I'm thinking about, it's going to do the underside bezel. So I'm going to coming over here on my top view. And basically I want to make a tube there. So I'm going to snapping into the vertex uh, on the bottom of the ring. And coming over here, basically, as long as they can be smaller than your stone, you don't see the metal behind it, that will be fine. And roughly about this size. All right. And I'm going to bring down like longer than what I need. At my front view, you can see it's going like this. Once I have this tube, I usually like to have a balance so slightly taper. So I'm going to use my gumball. And holding on the control shift and pick up the bottom piece and kind of scale it down a little bit. So then it will be tapered a little bit. Okay, if that look good to you, you wanted to duplicate it to other side. So we're gonna use the same um, command for rotate, snapping into the zero and rotating in the same degree. Minus 20, minus 40. And we get something like this. I also want to do the prong uh, by drawing a straight line, snapping into the grid from here roughly to here. And then I also need to rotate this guy. And since it is in the middle, it's going to be shear prong. So I'm going to rotate it again from the center. And for only minus 10 degree right there. Okay. So now I don't need this one anymore. That's uh, coming over here and let's pipe it. So I'm going to pipe it with the diameter. Um, you can eyeball and see which one work for you, but you want to make sure it's thick enough that way that you can have a stone cut on both sides. So I'm going to have it roughly about this size and that will be my prong. Now, Having the prong right in the middle is going to cut so much in there. So I'm going to move it up a little bit, something like that. And that is equally cutting on the both side. All right. You do not want it to have a prong is like coming out too much like this, uh, because when you buffing, it will be gone. There's too much pressure there. So you want to be something in between, just a little bit lower, right in the middle, um, the stone is higher than this prong. All right. Once you like it, go ahead, go ahead to uh, mirror this one to the other side. Okay. So now I have a prong in place. I'm going to pick up both of them and let me do the copy 
with rotate with the copy option. So again, I want to rotate it minus 20 and also minus 40. All right, so now I have this, they all, they all look good, but to make it look more elegant, I actually want to have only one prong at the end. So to move it back, instead of moving back and forth like this, I would like to use the align with the center and just type it zero, then they will coming in right on the construction plane. Okay, so if everything looked good to you, I'm gonna pick up everybody here and simply just mirror to the other side, snapping into the zero, hit enter, then I have things like that. One more thing I like to do is having a window cut out right in the middle here, and that allow more light to go through. So I'm gonna pick up uh, with my gumball, just going to scale it up somewhere here, making a copy by tapping the all key, and do it again, holding the shift, and tapping with the all key. All right, so now this is the two new curves we have. Simply, let's go ahead to uh, make them into the solid by straight extrusion. And once we extrude it, we can do is come in the front view. I would like to use the bowling difference. This guy, this guy, this guy, and this, and this one will be cut by this. All right, so then we have that opening over there. Okay, so now we have things like that and I make it extra long is because I can trim it off uh, very clean at once. So let's go ahead to pick up everybody and bullion unit everyone. So that become one piece and then we can pick up this one and let's go ahead to extrude it straight. And we want to cut the bottom all at once. So bullion difference, this guy will be different out of this guy. All right, so now we finish the setting, bring back to the stone, and this is what we have here. All right, so now we need to deal with the shank. For the shank, I would like to, uh, using the conic corner on the rectangle, snapping into on the side for the end point here, and want to do the shank for 1.5 millimeter by 1.5 millimeter. Okay, and right there, I'm going to simply just using the move command to move this point back to this point. All right, so now it's right in the center, and let's go ahead to mirror to the other side, and holding the shift, so you will get this to the other side. All right, once you got that, let's finish the bottom of the ring shank first. So we're gonna use the surface tool, you got sweep one, and you got this cross section, and make sure they all align inside of a ring shank. And you hit enter. So that will be the bottom. The top, I actually like to have it a little bit wider, more like a spoon kind of a shape over there. So I'm going to come in over here and simply going to draw some shape. Uh, they look something like this, about this Y. And we can, we can keep changing if we want to. And then I also wanted to have a straight line roughly from here down. And we are going to use the command for blend. I got blend from here to here. And if you see something like that, pretty much it's because they are not aligned. So if we take a look on the side, you're going to see this curve is right there, halfway in the middle. And then this curve is right there. All right, so to make them work nicely, we're gonna pick up both of them. And we wanna project it to the construction plane. And make sure we wanna delete the input. All right, so now they are right in the middle. As you can see, I marked them into the red color. So now we come back here, let me hiding this one. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use the blend command and I'm going to blend from here to here. So it's nice and smooth and having this one to mirror to the other side like this. Okay, and double make sure if this is the curve you like and you can join it. 
Now we have this curve and I basically need an opening there uh, because I cannot have the curve connected. So I'm going to trim the middle off and take this circle off. So basically I do not want them to connect and then you will have a better sweep there. I want to draw a line from here to here and make sure it's roughly the same position. Maybe this one need to be just a little bit lower there. So coming over here, we got curve from two view and the first curve is this. The second curve is this again, first curve, second curve. So now you can see that I have something like this, right? Now we are going to do is using a sweep to rail. You got rail one, rail two, you got this cross section. And then you get this huge bump there, but it's okay if we maintain the high, it will come back there. And that's just click OK, right? So then we will have this shape there. I'm going to turn on what I have there. And basically on my front view, I wanted that piece we just made and mirror to the other side over there and join to the bottom of the ring shank. All right, don't forget to cap it so it will become solid. So now what we need to do is cut it out something in the middle. So what you can do is using this two curve and then you want to offset them uh, inside uh, for whatever thickness you want. I have it here for uh, 0.8 millimeter, bring in like this. And this one too, I'm going to bring in like this. If we look at this one, I actually need to close them so I basically wanted to use the blank command to bring back here and here. And then on the bottom one right here and here, they are going to trim each other. Okay. Having something really pointy may be hard for do the fillet later on. So I'm going to giving a little fillet. So we want to fillet it for like 0.4 millimeter and see how it goes. Maybe that's too big, maybe 0.2 millimeter coming here and here. They look all right. So I'm going to join them. Okay. With that curve at this position, and if you like it to be higher, you can just move it higher. We're simply going to use this curve to trim the surface there all the way. So then I have something like this. Okay. And to close this surface, we we can use the command it's called loft and we're going to loft from this guy to this guy. Hit enter, click OK. The same thing you're going to do on the other side, loft from this edges to this edges and click OK. And don't forget to join them. All right. If that look OK to you, go ahead to uh, making a small fillet. So let's say 0.15. And I'm going to click it here and that's working and we're going to click it here and that's working too. So let's do the same thing on here and here for 0.15. All right. So that will be our mother's ring and happy mother's day for all the mother in the world. I wish you have a very good holiday and thank you for watching and we'll see you next.